Hey everybody, it's Orlando again here at Kingdom Conversations. Thank you all so much for joining us another week, another week of Kingdom Conversations and just great opportunity for us to dive into uh, what does Kingdom Awakening look like in our community, especially here in Cincinnati, but of course uh, throughout the entire earth. So as you've seen the last two weeks, we've had some chances to dive in with Brother Jerry. I've had the awesome opportunity to sit and talk with him. Uh, as we do know, he is out right now. And so we're, uh, of course, praying with him and for him as we're waiting for his quick return here in a couple of weeks. But in the meantime, I'm so glad to have uh, Dennis Bosazier here with us, who is the lead pastor at Marymount Community Church. And so we're going to have some great conversations today. Thank you so, so much again for joining me. Yeah, good to be with you, Orlando, and uh, be part of this. And uh, yeah, we'll be uh, continuing in prayer with you with uh, for Brother Jerry. Thank you, thank you. And so actually, for those who may not know, um, you have a very special relationship with Brother Jerry. Mm -hmm. The two of you uh, go back a, a couple of years, but one thing that I've learned that the two of you have uh, really talked about, had conversations around, developed a relationship around is this concept of kingdom. So mm -hmm. if you could just uh, share with us a story of the two of you talking, connecting over kingdom. Yeah, yeah, thanks Orlando. Yeah, so Jerry and I, uh, have talked kingdom a number of times and how we sort of came into that. I think uh, for me, I remember uh, sharing with him the story several years ago now, uh, maybe 20 years ago now, uh, reading through the New Testament uh, all, all at once through a Christmas break and uh, coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, where it says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. And I'd been a Christian for several years, but that verse kind of grabbed hold of me. Yeah. And it's like, I don't think I fully understand or experience that power. Yeah. And that just put me on a quest to uh, really expand my, my understanding of Jesus and expand my understanding of what the kingdom is and um, seeking out that, that work. Yeah. And seeing that work. Yeah. And, and there were several times where very shortly after that, uh, we noticed uh, real changes in healing, like the elders at our church would yeah. pray for healing. And we started seeing a lot of miraculous healings taking place as we anointed people with oil, mm. according to James chapter five. And uh, in mission work, uh, seeing uh, young orphans delivered from demons. Uh, and, and seeing the authority of Jesus coming over those lives and uh, also just watching the gospel, uh, the gospel move uh, in communities like in Nigeria, where we've been working for the past 10 years or so. And there's uh, over the over that 10 year period, there's like 13,000 new believers, wow. and 240 new churches. Mm -hmm. And that that's these these villages you know, getting wells and water and clinics and schools. Yeah. So that's the kingdom. It's yeah. where it begins to change the entire fabric of a community or of a culture. Mm -hmm. So we love, Jerry and I love just talking about how that recognition came, yeah. you know, into our lives. Uh, so it's, um, it's, been, uh, it's been good. I loved reading his book. I loved his take on the church and the kingdom. Um, but uh, that that's really been kind of the the thrust of our conversation. You know, it's interesting that you you, you mentioned that verse. It's one of the first things that uh, Brother Jerry would dive into when it comes to kingdom, uh, that it not be a matter of word. But I know some some translations actually say demonstration of power even. Right. And you mentioned mm -hmm. um, elders laying hands and healing and anointing with oil and people being delivered and, and just these different levels of demonstration. Can you tell us, for those who may not know what that is, what does that look like? What does that even mean? Um, what does What is the power of demonstration when it comes to kingdom? And why was that so important for you as this indicator after that moment of, I guess, revelation or change for you? Yeah. You know, looking at the way uh, Jesus trained his disciples and what he demonstrated was to preach the kingdom. And when you preach the kingdom, then signs and wonders follow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so I think it is, uh, it is the, 
the obedience to what he says to do uh, and that, that brings that authority. And so he does command us to cast out demons and heal the sick and raise the dead. I haven't, I haven't personally seen anybody being raised from the dead, uh, but I totally believe it because uh, we have reports of ministries all around the world where people yeah. are being raised from the dead. So it, it is that idea of speaking in the authority of the Holy Spirit, speaking the kingdom, but then uh, following that with demonstration yeah. of power. Yeah, that's and it it is it is real. It is uh, every day. Um, it is whether I'm walking uh, around my community and I pray for someone, uh, whether I'm speaking to a group of non-believers. Yeah. Uh, my family members, you, we were talking about family mm, and yeah, some of those yeah, conversations. Right. So it, it is an everyday uh, it, an everyday thing. And I, I, I think of that parable in Matthew 13, 44, yeah. where he says the kingdom of God is like a man who finds treasure buried in a field. Mm -hmm. And he hid it and with great joy went and sold all he had to buy that field. Yeah. The kingdom is, yeah, the, is the biggest idea in civilization because it is the recognition that Jesus has got this entire order coming. Yeah. It's here now, not fully yet, but it's coming. And uh, we see it and we can be part of it. Um, and that that's a thrill. That's worth investing your whole life in. Yeah, that is. I, I, that parable always amazes me. And how how we play a role in that right how how what's so important about us within the concept of what it looks like to be a part of the kingdom what it looks like mm -hmm. uh for we mentioned earlier in our previous conversation of the fact that we were invited into the kingdom you know i, I loved how you said at one point in our conversation of people love to say i invited christ into my heart it's like that's great and you were like, well, he actually invited you into his kingdom right. and how beautiful that is. Can you help us understand why that's such a different thing? Right. Because it, it's true. I'm supposed to invite him into my heart. I'm supposed to invite him into my life. But why is it such a keen difference between that and him inviting us into his kingdom and how that plays such a big role in, in salvation, in our walk and in, in, in righteousness as a whole? Like, why, why is that so important? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, we, we we preach a gospel, and when I say we, I'm referring to the American church yeah. in general. Yeah. <clears throat> we preach a gospel of individual salvation, uh, of Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and uh, covering the, the penalty of our sin with his blood, which is completely true and completely real. And we often then invite people to invite Jesus into their heart. And, and at times that becomes a shrunken, it's a little gospel yeah. because it, it deals with my personal salvation, but it misses the glorious uh, big gospel, which is yeah. the kingdom gospel. And Jesus didn't say, go and preach the gospel of individual salvation. He said, yeah. go and preach the gospel of the kingdom. Yeah. So when I think of that, I think of the small gospel, the typical American church gospel, but I think of... The, the gospel of Jesus and, and what he went to preach in the towns and villages of Galilee and the synagogues yeah. was, was a big gospel of a new kingdom yeah. coming, you know, and they, they that knew the scriptures then would know that's the, the final kingdom of, of Daniel. That's the, the rock coming out of the mountain, crushing all the other kingdoms. Yeah. This yeah. is a new world order that yeah. he's bringing. He's bringing healing. He's bringing uh, the release of demons, he's bringing resurrection, he's bringing eternity. So it's a way bigger idea. So yes, invite him into your heart for sure, because that <clears throat> signifies you love him and you want him, mm -hmm. but also recognize like he's inviting you out of the kingdom of Satan yeah. into the kingdom of God, yeah. out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So that's a that's like getting your immigration papers. That's like yeah. leaving. 
that's like leaving turmoil and disaster behind mm -hmm. and coming into the kingdom of light. That's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That that's is. exodus. Yeah. Like that's total change in your situation. Yeah. Not only now, but for all eternity. Well, you could say that that's true salvation, right? That's the whole purpose Amen. of it is yep. what am I being freed from? I think that's interesting that we mentioned that. And we had that previous conversation with Brother Jerry and a few other guests of the purpose of salvation. Uh, that it's not just a heaven hell thing, but if I'm truly to be saved, I need to be saved from something. And it's not just something that happens when I die, but something that's happening today. And I think that's the beauty of the kingdom. We can step into it now, right. which was the purpose, uh, and especially what Christ told us. Yeah. So I, the question is, mm -hmm. for me, when we talk about kingdom, and I love what you said about big gospel versus little gospel and mm -hmm. us really stepping into this kingdom movement, what does that look like for me as an average individual, right? For a person who has no idea what's going on, because I think... The little gospel, as, as you coined it, is so familiar with people. And if I'm not a believer, if I don't know anything about God and I hear the big gospel, do you feel like that's something that people can grab a hold of? Or is it possibly something that can intimidate people from really joining, in, joining into the kingdom? Right. What, is, what is your take on that? Yeah, well, it's it's. Uh, I, I think people can get it because he wouldn't have us preach something people don't get. Mm, but yeah. it, it's a little bit yeah. like, you know, you can find the kid in the in the in the neighborhood playing with mud in a in a in a pool, and you you can say, hey, look, let's go to the sea. Let me show you the ocean. Yeah. Let let me see. Let yeah. me show you the big picture. Mm -hmm. So I think we can grab hold of it because it's not just about us. It's about him and his glory. Mm. So what I think is beautiful about the kingdom gospel that people can sink their teeth into is it's eternity. It's resurrection. You know, we celebrate the cross, which we should. Uh, fewer celebrate the resurrection, mm. uh, but we still, most of us celebrate the resurrection. Very few of us celebrate the ascension. Yeah. When he returned to heaven to sit on the throne at the right hand of his father. And from there, he poured out the Holy Spirit, which should be the sign like that everybody knows the father really liked what he did. Yeah. And it's going to last forever. So it's, it's something that we have to look forward to forever. Forever. And we have life. We have resurrection. We have... The, the return to the garden, all the beauty we long for will be given to us for all of eternity. And the best part of it is the minute you, you come out of the waters of baptism and you are filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you get promoted to ambassador. Yeah. You know, if the president of the United States yeah. says to you, Orlando, brother, I want you to be our ambassador to the United Nations, or I want to be our ambassador to yeah. the United Kingdom, yeah. you would say, wow, yeah. I get to represent the president. Well, we are, from the get-go, appointed ambassadors. That's good. And we get to go, whether it's at work or in our neighborhoods mm -hmm. or in the hospital or any place that we are, we carry the kingdom with us. That's good. So we carry, Jesus gave us all his authority. So we carry the authority of Jesus to bring that good news to wherever we go. So wherever you go, wherever I go, we are carrying the kingdom. That's good. Right? Yeah. So it's 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 spreading even as we walk into yep. a room. Yep. And people can see the spirit on us. That's they can good. see the joy on us. Yeah. Then we can we can say we're I'm an ambassador of the king. That's good. Ambassadors of the King. We're going to take a break. There's a lot to unpack there. I'm so excited for where this conversation is going. Uh, we'll be right back with Dennis Bosager. Hey, I just want to spend a minute uh, with you, encouraging you to get this book, Kingdom Awakening by uh, Pastor Jerry. Uh, this book is, uh, first of all, a lifetime of revelation from the Lord to Jerry. But what I love about it is it's 
it's about a half scripture. It, you're, going to, you're going to get a real tour through the word of God and what it says about the kingdom. And then on every chapter, there's these reflection questions. They're going to challenge you uh, to really think about where you're at with the Lord, where you're at as far as the kingdom is concerned. And uh, it will bless you. It will bring to mind what your gifts are, what your role is. It'll encourage you to be an ambassador as we've been talking. And uh, it, it will encourage your walk. So I, I encourage you to get this at Amazon, uh, Kingdom Awakening, your part in the battle of the ages. And let's uh, get more and more and more of uh, the church in the battle. Thank you guys for sticking with us. We are back here with Dennis Bosager, who is the lead pastor at Marymount Community Church. And we're excited about the conversation so far. I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm chopping at the bit here to keep on going. So we just got done really diving into just this concept a little bit more when it comes to the kingdom. And you mentioned a few things about our role in it and, and ambassadorship. Uh, but I want to kind of start back at the beginning of what you had said uh -huh. when it comes to, again, this difference in the gospel, because I think that's where people sometimes get a little bit lost, right? Why do we keep saying big gospel versus little gospel? Why do we keep saying the gospel of the kingdom um, and all of that? I've, I've noticed something and I want to get your take on it. We have kind of within the American church, as you mentioned, these two facets, if you will one of which is all about personal responsibility, okay? It's what I do with my life, I need to do this, live a certain kind of way, striving for righteousness in a big way. Uh, and then on the other side, there's a facet of uh, me stepping into the love of Christ and his forgiveness and how salvation is open to all people. Um, where does the gospel of the kingdom fall within that context, right? With this kind of battle, if you will, between these these two loud voices within the American church right now. How does kingdom play into any of that, if at all, for that matter? Um, but what what is the difference in that? Yeah. Well, I, I think first of all, as Americans, we don't really understand the concept of of a king mm -hmm. and a kingdom. Yeah. In fact, we rebelled against that. That's true. Uh, and so our our mindset, you know, is towards a king is somewhat foreign. Mm. Now we look over at the pond and we look at the Queen of England and we also, it's not quite a full picture because while she reigns, okay. she doesn't rule. Yeah. The prime minister rules and the, and, the, and the government rules. So we have a king who both reigns and rules. Mm. So as subjects of the king, he expects uh, that we will be about the family business. Yeah. He expects that, you know, so he's not, he's not going to feel very good if we're asking him what color socks to wear in the morning, because that's a little bit beyond. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But he's going to want us to be show up in the morning ready for duty, mm. ready for orders. So I, I think somewhere in there is a recognition. First of all, he's the king. He rules. He calls the shots. But second of all, he holds us responsible yeah. for our part of the vineyard. Mm -hmm. And he, to mix metaphors, and he uh, expects uh, and judges, will judge everyone according to what they have done, what the, the choices they've made. What have you done? The father's going to say, what have you done with my son? Yeah. So there's personal responsibility. There's, there's that absolute true biblical foundation that we will be held accountable for every word, every deed, all our choices and so forth. Mm -hmm. And there's that absolute biblical truth that he is sovereign and nothing surprises him. He never learns. He's known everything from all eternity. Yeah. He's never surprised. Nothing ever occurs to him. He understands the whole picture all the time as one eternal act. So those are both true. Yeah. And so we are sent to represent him because he recognizes every tribe, every tongue, every race, every, every person is to be 
given the opportunity to, to respond to the kingdom gospel. But at the same time, um, he leads us in a lifestyle that he modeled because he yeah. said, I do nothing except what the father does. Mm -hmm. I only go where he is at work. Yeah. And I think he wants us to do the same thing. So at least for me, I've learned to get up in the morning and, and look at my day, like this interview and whatever else I've got on and say, Lord, what are we doing today? What's going on, Dad? Yeah. What are we what are we up to today? And to try to listen for what's a word of encouragement that so and so needs or what's this meeting going to be about or uh, I want you to change the message for Sunday. I want you to, you know, whatever it might be, but it's our life together. It's a conversation. Yeah. And he is the king, but he's also a friend. Yeah. So it's that tension we have to live in, mm. you know, between the rule of God and our responsibility. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the power and authority of God and his friendship yeah. and intimacy. That's good. So, we have to live in that tension. That's good. That you, you know, outlined in that, that choice. It's, it's interesting because you bring up the relationship piece being so, so, so key. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing that I've always learned is that when we take a look at the importance of the big, the big gospel, right? And that, yes, the little gospel is a part of that and the importance of Christ shedding his blood. And that's one thing that you really dove into earlier that I want to kind of pick back up on and how we celebrate certain parts but then when we get to the resurrection not as many of us celebrate that and then we get to the ascension not as many of us celebrate that and the importance of all of it together right is there something about kingdom that does exactly what you did which is there's this truth and there's this truth and they seem to oppose one another but kingdom oh. wraps it all up and makes it all make sense yeah. to the point where it's both God is ruler and he's also one who has a relationship with us. What about kingdom makes that so true because it feels so opposite? Right. Yeah, the, the kingdom is is a bit of a paradox because it's visible and invisible. It's here, but it's not fully here yet. Yeah. Uh, it's like Jesus is fully God and fully man. Mm. It's uh, it's this. You know, Jesus is full of truth and he's full of grace. So there's yeah, a there's yeah. a there's a a both and nature of the kingdom mm. that is it is now, it is real, it is advancing, uh, you know, bold people are taking the gospel, taking the kingdom, bringing the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So I I see it as the bigger the big idea that in 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 encompasses our responsibility, his rulership, uh, our present, our future. Yeah. Uh, and it also encompasses all of life, right? It's not just, you know, okay, I've got my work pie and my family pie, mm -hmm. piece of pie, and I got, I got my financial, you know, and I slip in my spiritual pie. He wants the whole pie. Yeah. So he, he actually owns the whole pie. Mm -hmm. So, bringing like you were saying earlier bringing that conversation into my family my extended family mm, yeah. my co-workers my neighbors uh and you know that that's one of the things that the little gospel feels like a private gospel mm. the big gospel that's feels good. like a public gospel that's really good and i think when we buy into that private you know the world wants us to keep our faith private. The enemy wants us to keep our faith private. Yeah. But Jesus says, no, no, no. I want you to go and talk about the kingdom all the time with your kids when they're when they're asleep, mm -hmm. when they're walking, when First you're talking, talking, when you're eating. You know, so I love the families that are reading the Bible every meal uh, yeah. that are talking yeah. to their kids about. I love the 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 bringing of faith into work. Uh, I love the bringing of faith into government. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, those senators and those congressmen and women who are believers in, in Jesus who are the salt. You know, yeah. Jesus didn't promise us we'd take over the government, but he did tell us to be salt and light yeah. 
in in you know that's very true in the mix very true yeah so that's the the beauty of the kingdom for me is it's just every day all the time opportunity and the kingdom is always designed for increase yeah it's got inherent power in it so when you open it up when you talk about it it changes things you know, it's interesting that you say it's all the time, every conversation. Uh, it, it brings to mind what you said earlier about all of us being ambassadors. Mm -hmm. And I imagine how an ambassador, every conversation that they have is always on the clock. It's always um, an opportunity to represent whatever right. country that they represent, whatever people they represent. Um, and I, I love how, how you talk about that. What exactly does that look like? Once we talk about I mean, you said as soon as we leave the water and we're filled with the Holy Spirit, God appoints us as an ambassador. How does one be that? How does one look at themselves as an ambassador and, and go about doing that on a daily basis? Yeah. So first of all, we have to learn the story. Mm. You know, yeah. you've got to begin with the word of God. You have to learn the story. You have to know the story uh, in all of its acts and facets. And... Um, and then it is a matter of sharing the story. Mm. Uh, and a good, a good place to start is in our homes. Yeah. And really talking about, and talking about the king and the kingdom, not talking about religion or rules. Uh, now, of course, he has commands and so forth. But mm -hmm. so start with the word, uh, be filled with the spirit yeah. every day. And then... Uh, submitting ourselves and, and seeking for opportunities to honor the king. Mm. And uh, mm. it can like it that. can be uh, by picking up and doing the dishes at breakfast before you go to school. It can be, uh, you know, a simple thing of taking the garbage out. Yeah. It can be the simple thing of helping an older lady cross the street on your way to school or at on your way to work. Um, I like going to Starbucks yeah. and um, buying a coffee. And then I'd like to leave some money to the red cash register uh, person to say, hey, if you see somebody who looks a little down today, buy them a drink and just tell them it's love from above. Yeah. And <clears throat> uh, or tell them it, the king loves them. So bringing in that into the co constant That's conversation. See true. somebody limping on the street, come up to them and say, uh, the kingdom of God is moving today right now and I feel like the king is asking me to pray for you. Can yeah. I pray for you? Uh, there are so many small daily ways that we can, we can bring the kingdom into conversation. You know, I, I love the, again, the the both and aspect of it that we mm. talked about before we're saying there's a big gospel the gospel of the kingdom but as we walk that out it's in the small things the little things that mm -hmm. we do every single day i love that mm -hmm. i love that so much thank you so much for that um as as we kind of bring it to a close mm -hmm. we've said a lot of things about big gospel little gospel uh the both and way that the gospel incorporates every bit of our life it incorporates relationship as well as his rulership. If you could say just one thing to those who are watching today when it comes to the importance of kingdom, this kingdom awakening that uh, you've joined in with Brother Jerry and many other people around the city to help mm -hmm. uh, press out. And as you guys really stand uh, on a hill and yell this out to our city and to the world, what is it that you would like us to know as we sign off today is it's so important about kingdom, the passion behind kingdom. Uh, what should we hear? Yeah. Well, in a world of COVID and the kind of year we've had, the losses we've had, the difficulties we've had, uh, that's part of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus suffered. Jesus experienced opposition and difficulty. So I would, <clears throat> first of all, say, what we're going through right now uh, is very much part of kingdom life. It's part of carrying the kingdom and walking through difficulties together. Um, the other thing I would say is that the
the flip side of that is we have hope. It's not going to be like this forever. Mm. If you had a miscarriage or you had a child die or you had a grandparent die or you had a father or mother die, um, the good news is that's not permanent. There is a kingdom coming. It is coming. Uh, it is here now. It is growing. Uh, the Lord Jesus has invited us in to be part of what he's doing to be his ambassadors. So I would just uh, recognize that and not to minimize our difficulties, but to say we have a perspective. It's the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is one day we will be reconciled fully to God. One day we will be reconciled, uh, you know, black and white. One day we will be reconciled teenagers, rebellious teenagers and parents. Uh, we will be reconciled with those around the world yeah. who have uh, who have been walking and suffering in many ways more than we have. Uh, and we will be joined together with all those over time, uh, the great cloud of witnesses who have trusted and believed the message of the king. Amen. Thank you so much. Yeah. Dennis Bosazier, Marymont Community Church. Thank you so much for being a part of this kingdom awakening, this kingdom conversation. Thank you. Uh, and to all of you, we will see you guys next week. We love you all. And remember, as we said today, as a part of this big gospel you play a role as an ambassador Amen. and Christ has invited you into his kingdom. So we'll see you again.